May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. For those who are here at church, for those who are online, we are one community together. And uh, we gather here in the middle of May and happy Mother's Day, by the way. Um, and we will spend some time in prayers um, during Mother's Day. And we continue to be in the season of Easter and in the Gospel of John. And um, as we gather today, we are mindful of what God continues to do in the world. And when we gather, there is something that comes and is given to us individually and also as a community. And so we trust how all of that comes together. And if by chance you are new to Mount Olivet, we always say worship is the place where you get a sense of who we are in God's call in the world. And we trust that that will be so. So as we begin, I invite you to stand as you are able at the font for our thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in these waters, we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for water that washes us clean and quenches our thirst, that nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism and the outpouring of your spirit. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water where drought dries the earth, brings refreshment, where despair prevails, grant hope, where chaos threatens, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you in the spirit abides with us forever. Amen. We sing together now. Oh 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. We pray together, come Holy Spirit, wind of God, breath of life, advocate, counselor, reminder of Christ, teacher of truth and grantor of forgiveness and peace. Breathe through our worship and our lives. Amen. Today's reading is from the first, 14th chapter of John. If you love me, keep my commandments. 
And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the, my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Word of God, word of life. Morning. The holy hum of Monday afternoons in the Mount Olivet kitchen. The sounds of pots and pans clanging, the chopping of vegetables from the garden. Smells wafting down the hallway. What's for dinner? Staff like me begin to wonder right around this time. Veteran volunteers lead and guide newcomer helpers from inside and outside of Mount Olivet. All ages and stages of life stream in. Every week, new teams form, learn one another's names, tell stories, serve together, unite in the spirit of truth. That same spirit that Jesus said he would send to us in his stead. That same spirit that declares that all are indeed welcome and that all who are hungry should be fed. It's Monday afternoon and on this little corner of Plymouth there is a visible sign of God's spirit abiding in and through the meals prepared in and through bodies who are giving and receiving, in and through nourishment for bellies, love letters sent into our community saying, whomever you are, you matter to us and to God. Where these love letters go and what they will accomplish next, we never know, but we trust that somehow they make a way. Pastor Beth often says that the community meal was a lifeline to the spirit in those uncertain days of the pandemic. And I often wonder, how do we harness that same kind of energy and that same kind of spirit in all that we are and all that we do and all that we will be? Our text for today has Jesus continuing to say goodbye to his disciples before he's arrested and crucified and has something important to say to us, I think. It's a bit nebulous, this text, this long winding goodbye of Jesus with so many moving parts. It's a bit like a Minnesotan goodbye on steroids. You all know what I mean by that. We get the sense that Jesus in this sacred moment with his disciples is also working all the things out for himself as well. And there are prepositions galore. He says, the Father will give you another advocate, or Holy Spirit, to be with you forever. You will know her because she abides with you, and she will be in you on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Remember learning about prepositions back in grade school, those short words like in and through and with, 
and among and by and alongside. Prepositions are those short words that denote what? I know there's some English grammar people out here. Prepositions denote the relationship between things. Jesus tells the disciples and all those who are trying to trust in him goodbye by revealing that the fundamental language of God is relationship. Our creator God abides in and through the embodied son of God, Jesus Christ, who abides in and through the Holy Spirit, sent to abide in relationship in and through you and in and through your relationships and connections with others. We are endlessly offered this relationship with div the divine. And this is the same kind of relationship we are asked to go out and cultivate, nurture, and share with others. It's a simple enough concept, right? Yes and no. New Testament scholar D.A. Carson names the paradox this way, being in loving relationship with another is simple enough for a toddler to memorize and appreciate, and yet profound enough that most mature believers are repeatedly embarrassed at how poorly we comprehend it and put it into practice. Relationship is the internal and external language of God, of God, of the Son, of the Spirit, of the Holy Trinity that we trust in and worship here this morning. Relationship is in the very DNA of the divine and it's in the DNA of the entire created world with its earth, its sky, its sea, and all of its creatures. And yet relationship and connection don't always come easy for us for about a million and a one reasons. We like to be safe, not vulnerable. Most of the time, we like our own cozy circle of people who like the same things we do and who agree with us. And then there's the productivity-obsessed culture that we swim in. We are so busy, so focused on our checklists and our results, so exhausted when we make it to the end of our week that creating and nurturing new relationships seems like a luxury for which we have no time or energy. But what if this so-called luxury is at the very heart of what Jesus means to love one another when he's no longer here? So my invitation for you this week and for me is no matter what you're trying to accomplish at work, at home, at church, in your community, is to invest a little more of your time and spirit and energy in relationships, in your old relationships, in new relationships, in existing ones. Wonder with me about how a change in that kind of perspective and priority might make a difference in how we live out the gospel. On Monday and Tuesday of last week, I had the privilege of attending a retreat with other first call pastors in the Minneapolis area synod at Dunroven Retreat Center. It's a beautiful spot on the St. Croix River, just north of Stillwater. And as pastors discussed all the ways to make the gospel of Jesus Christ come alive inside and outside the walls of their church, some advice was offered by a colleague, a congregational organizer. 
who said these words, relationship and connection proceed action. Relationship and connection proceed action. That made a lot of sense to me. Loving one another as Jesus commands is not primarily a decision to be made or an a nut to crack, or an item to check off a checklist, a project to deliver, a right way or a wrong way to do something, or an event to execute. Loving one another starts with entering into relationships with others and encouraging the loving actions that might emerge. Curious, I felt compelled to reach out to some of the regulars who serve at our own community meal and ask them for a word that describes what motivates them to serve. And you can probably guess the word that rang most loudly. There it was in my email box, connection. Connections between volunteers and those receiving meals some of whom come week after week, connections between the volunteers, high schoolers and retirees, and everyone in between, sharing lives and their wisdom. Relationships have formed in that kitchen, and as meals are delivered curbside, relationships continue to form and pave a way for what God is calling us to next in that ministry. And through those relationships, loving kindness takes motion in community, one meal, one person at a time. It's Monday afternoon, and the Mount Olivet Kitchen is abuzz with sounds of volunteers chopping and chattering, sharing stories and laughter, and the Spirit of God Well, she's working alongside them. Thanks be to God. Stand as we sing. my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou choose. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my life that I may be 
consecrated Lord to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. As God's word stirs among us, we confess our faith, the faith of the church, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God be with you all. For those online, we will connect with you in the Facebook comments for us at church. Please share and receive peace from those around you. We now continue um, with the offering. We have a basket up front. Kids, all your coins and uh, dollars go to Feed Hungry People, a Venmo code in the bulletin, and for all the ways that you invest in um, our call specifically here at Mount Olivet, that lifeline of both giving and receiving. We're so very grateful. And I want you to listen closely because this is the last Sunday the choir will be with us in this program year, and we're just soaking it all up. Yes. 
to the choir. And thank you to Kim Capel, who has stepped in in major ways while Angela's on sabbatical. Thank you, Kim. We pray together, generous God, in this, in this meal, meal, you offer your very self, self and we, we give, give thanks, thanks for these, these gifts, gifts of the earth. earth. In the breaking of the bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true paschal lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought to us eternal life and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangel, angels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of, the, of me. That spirit of life gathers us together as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you in this meal. God gets relationships. And so that spirit of life that Jesus talks about before his death is made real in this meal. In fact, when this meal was created, there were those sitting around who would betray and deny and run and flee. And God says, I am still present with you. There is still a place as you make your way and figure it out. There's forgiveness. There's a brand new beginning. And there's a lifeline to God and neighbor. If you ever know how to foster a relationship, 
it is having a meal together, and that is what we do today. So simply open your hands to receive that gift that continues to come to nurture you and your call in the world. For those who are online, wherever you're taking communion today, God finds you there. Hear these words. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. For those at church, feel free to come up as the ushers guide you. Wafers are gluten-free. Wine is red. Grape juice is clear in color. You are invited up to pray after you receive if you choose. Please come forward now. This meal of life is prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And so now we pray. If you are online, you can type your comments, um, your prayers in there, and I will read those in a minute. And for us here at church, um, I will have a brief opening, and then I just invite you to raise your hand, speak your prayer today. And this relational sense that we don't come to church sterilely, we come embodying what's going on, our worries and our hopes and our grief and the places where we're calling God to be. And so when you speak that, you don't hold that by yourself. You share that in community. That is a gift that we give to each other, this ongoing sense as we worship and as we go out, that we hold people in our hearts and trust how God will show up. So let's pray. Uh, God, today we receive... Uh, little words as prepositions that point to this relationship that Jesus spends so much time in this gospel preparing for when he won't be there and reminding us that we are not alone, that the spirit of life is as near as the breath in our lungs and the love that we give in this world. And we pray today, especially for Mother's Day, um, God, thank you uh, for maternal love that is shown in such divine ways that comes in the dailiness of relationships. And uh, we hold tenderly how this day can bring us back in grief. Um, relationships uh, that aren't healthy or where we want them to be, um, in death, in illness, whatever that is. And uh, God, that promise of the Spirit comes as healings, as reminders, as a call. And for all the ways that we are just called to show up and love each other. And so hear the prayers of your community now as we pray. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. What prayers do you have today? What's your prayer? Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Um, so a prayer for moms or grandmas who are in the hospital sick, um, that they have a good Mother's Day where they are, that it's probably not um, what they would prefer, but that love would come close. God, hear this prayer. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Ned. Is that Cindy, you said? Yeah. Um, so we pray for uh, Ned's niece, Cindy, um, uh, prayers for healing, um, God, uh, for her family, too, as they love and care for her. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Kathy. So we pray for the Kemp family, um, ongoing prayer that Kathy has spoken for this treatment of brain cancer, complicated, um, God, in so many different ways. And for all the way that your love and your dear presence, healing to relationships and bodies, minds, and spirits, we pray, God, in your mercy. Yeah, Barb. Oh. <laughs> Your wife just called you very old, Roy. <laughs> it's a relationship of love. Hey, old is good. Um, happy birthday to you, Roy, for all the joy um, in this day and the celebrating of your life and the years um, of wisdom and experience and love, we pray. God, in your mercy. Brian. Mark Wadman. Happy birthday, Mark and Roy. God in your mercy. Yes, Suzanne. God, we pray for Nan, uh, Suzanne's uh, friend who is dealing with cancer right now. Um, an unknown future, unstable ground. And uh, for treatment, all the unanswered questions, the yet-to-be-determined, 
Um, God, breathe that breath of life, that spirit of accompaniment and advocate to walk alongside of her. We pray for healing, God, in your mercy. Brian. Uh, God, we pray for Bruce Bow going um, in for prostate uh, surgery tomorrow, has cancer, um, and um, again in the midst of that disease, God, uh, for the next steps, for clarity, um, for love, for healing of Bruce's body, uh, for Patty and their entire family as well, we pray, God, in your mercy. Tim. Um, prayers for safe travel. Um, Tim Strumman is, is sponsoring a family from Nicaragua uh, who will be housed in Parkside Apartments, and we look forward to sharing more on that. But for safe travel, as they find their place for the spirit of relationship to already prepare a way for them um, to settle in for work, for care, for community, God, we pray. God, in your mercy. Kathy. Yeah, thank you for that prayer. Um, Tom Kappas, um, a longtime member here at Mount Olivet, uh, died on Thursday night. And so uh, Carol has been away online a lot in church as she has lived this vocation of caregiver. And uh, Carol, for tenderness to come to you um, as you plan, more details about Tom's funeral will be forthcoming for Tom's life um, in this world and now in heaven. Uh, for that uh, tender gift of healing to come to Carol and her family as well. God, in your mercy. Miriam. What's your cousin's name? Nolan. Um, God, Miriam is praying for her baby cousin, Nolan, who had a heart surgery. Just a miracle. Um, on a tiny little heart that doctors can go in and uh, fasten and heal bodies together. So Miriam, for your prayer that continues for Nolan, we join you in that prayer of healing. God, in your mercy. Uh, Angela Christie, for Joanne's mother who fell and was hospitalized on her way down to celebrate Mother's Day. Um, God, we pray uh, for Joanne, uh, her mom. Um, just uh, one step today um, has changed the pattern, not only of her day. Um, we pray for healing that comes in many, many ways. And you will note the flowers on the altar. Those are in celebration of life for Barb Olson. Um, just, uh, I would say, a matriarch of this church. Uh, her funeral service is tomorrow here at Mount Olivet. Uh, for all the ways Norm and her husband, or Norm, her husband, and Barb um, have just been such faithful people. It feels right to pray for Barb because she has prayed for so many of us through the years and for all the ways that this church will be an open and a hospitable place to her family and so many others that have known and loved her. That service is at 11 o'clock tomorrow, um, visitation at 10 with a lunch. Uh, following that as well. So uh, for Barb's life, for Tom's life, God, um, their gratefulness of their faith and relationship, we pray. God, in your mercy. Um, I have one last prayer, and that is, Greg, can you just raise your hand a little bit? Greg, fun far, and Mark Schmidt, uh, Barry Froseth is not here, um, Susan Shelberg, just to name a few. In the days to come, uh, just take a walk around this church and see what is transforming. Um, Greg comes out with his bobcat and nothing is left unturned. All the things that we need done around here with landscaping, um, and I know that's a joy for you, Greg, but we're so deeply grateful for your gifts. And Mark, with the labyrinth, we have some brand new signs that are gonna be um, in this area. Um, and so for all the ways that our property and grounds actually embody our vision 
of what God's doing, that Holy Spirit, as we watch things grow and bloom, as we pray with the labyrinth, all those different ways. Um, we're just so grateful for how each of us expresses our gifts and contributes to the whole um, and for this outside space that we have been so blessed with here at Mount Olivet. God, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, your grace, and your love. Amen. I'm going to invite Pastor Kristen up for a few announcements. Just a couple this morning. Uh, we are really feeling called to breathe life into our uh, funeral ministry here at Mount Olivet. Um, and so we are setting up a hospitality team. So if you feel called um, to support families um, during the, that difficult time and that sacred holy time, if hospitality is one of your gifts, if you like working behind the scenes and have a little bit of free time during the day on weekdays, just occasionally, um, please contact Joy Miller um, to become part of that team. And now uh, Dan Roth has a message about blues. I mean, brews, eats, and beats. All right, thank you. Forgot about that. Um, I'm an English teacher recovering, and we had preposition Sunday. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> so let's piggyback and use that. Remember, at the beginning of our church year, we were asked to talk to people we didn't know. And where? A name tag? What is going on in this crazy place? So what I'm here for, because I'm the engagement guy for Brews, Eats, and Beats, all right? It's about relationships, and we heard about it. And again, I'm preaching to the choir, and I'm going to get a little more serious about this this time. We have 27 new members. And those of us who have been on this earth a little longer than them, you have an opportunity to reach out and invite. Who doesn't want, to be at, doesn't want to be asked to be on the team? Could you now, you've had practice, and it was uncomfortable, and we survived it, and we're belonging. We have people that are feeling belong, that they're belonging here. Can you reach out? Can you reach out and volunteer and have them, I want you to be with me. That's what I'm saying to you today. We're going to the next level. Because if you remember the last time I was here to talk about this, I asked you a question. Anybody remember what that was? What was it? Yes, thank you. If you can, will you? How about that? Thumbs up there, yeah. Okay, we're moving up a notch. If you can, why not? Let's think about that. That will lead you to what we're asking. We need your support. Have a great day, rest of the day. Um, the rain's going to stop. It's going to be beautiful. Thank you, pastors. Stand as we sing.
The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead strengthen you with the Spirit and bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.